Hello friends, this is a beautiful evening. We are in Hyderabad and it's going to be a power packed evening with wonderful women and conversations. We have with us Namrata Sadwani, mom of twins and content creator, Manjulata Kalanidhi, a senior editor and the founder of the Rice Bucket Challenge, Dr. Apura Rawal, critical care specialist. So, um, we're just going to have some conversations. First of all, I really want to thank all of you all for supporting Fragile X Awareness through and through since the last five years. And uh, of course, I've met most of them only today. And it's really a great support to have from all of you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much for having you. us. And I think it's I wonderful all the work that you've been doing it's and uh, the constant upgradation <laughs> of the work and so much effort going in to yes. raise awareness and really make the world a better place. I think it's yeah. incredible what work you do. I've seen Shalini starting off with, I think, a few hundred followers yes. On, yes. on various social media and saying we need more, more people to write, talk. <laughs> you need more people to do. talk. And yes. then today, I think, they're yeah. really doing And great. consistency since uh, yeah. 20 years. Yes, yeah. 20 years. So, we, this being our 20th year, we've tried to make it extra special uh, July being awareness month, we had 100 light ups and India Gate lighting up yeah. was the biggest highlight. Yeah. Fantastic. And uh, today we will just have some wonderful yeah. conversations. July well done. The second is Fragile X Day. Awareness I know it's always day. one day ahead of my birthday, so okay. I'll never forget. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Wonderful. <laughs> wonderful, nice. wonderful. I think that's incredible. I mean, getting the India Gate to light up and what better way to raise awareness. Yeah, Big thing. I think everyone in Delhi is still speaking about why was India Gate green? Like, yeah. who did that? <laughs> yeah. That's a great conversation so, starter. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So let's start with, um, let me ask you, Dr. Purva, what is your opinion or concept of women empowerment? How would you put it? Yeah. Uh, so starting from uh, female infanticide, feticide, uh, menstrual hygiene, proper sanitation uh, and many things, women are not getting properly treated or they're not getting proper awareness. So I think we have to, we have to create this awareness and uh, from uh, even the treatment, medical treatment, I see many patients who are not having proper menstrual mm -hmm. hygiene and they are leading to many cancers, ovarian cancers and uh, so we need to be aware of this and we have to create the awareness to all the people around all the women right from all the villages to even, even, even in many places like in Delhi, even in Mumbai also, even though it is the capital of our country, still we see that there are many people who are uh, not having this awareness. So we have to first give the awareness about all these things and then we have to go about the empowerment. That's, that's wonderful. Absolutely and wonderful. Uh, would you all like to add in? Yeah. What um, so I would say empowerment is very simple. It's being able to make a choice. And when you're talking about women, uh, that is even more complicated in India because women have always been the oppressed gender. So for them to make a choice is a really big deal. A lot of times, even today, in even in urban areas with uh, you know very high social uh, socioeconomic backgrounds, we see that most of the time women are just made to just go. Okay, you know the parents decide you take up this job, mm. you, you marry this person, or you stay with them. Most of the choices are proxy, made proxy, so the day women can make a choice without uh, you know falling for these kind of traps, I would say is women empowerment. Wonderful. And so I'd like to share my two bits as well, especially as a mother. Uh, uh, first of all, I think uh, in India and I think in most of the world, uh, people generally say that, you know, oh, your family is only complete when you have a child. More so for the women, you know, the pressure is on them to sort of, um, you know, uh, within a specific time, within their marriage to, you know, uh, get pregnant, have a child and then, you know, take a, they, they, let their careers take a back seat when they have the child and, you know, so ultimately, it's the life of the woman that's the most affected. But And in very few cases, is the choice given to her whether she actually wants to be a mother or whether she doesn't want to be a mother. I think it's 2021. The choice really should be, you don't need a child to make your family complete. There are different definitions of families for different people. And definitely, children um, do not make your family complete. There are other factors involved over here. But having said that, once you do a couple does decide to take the decision to have a child. I think it is 
very very important that um, all medical tests are in place and a woman and beyond that even a family is uh, financially mentally socially and emotionally capable of taking care of the child and th the first step to that is making sure that everything is all right health wise uh, with the woman and uh, medical tests are very very important and also um, you know we have a lot of uh, uh, science is very very prevalent these days it has uh, really become a boon uh, in the lives of uh, expecting parents and you know expecting couples and i think uh, if there is um, some kind of uh, gene abnormality which is noticed in the course of the tests or you know if there is something which is seen as a not so typical situation it should be left to the woman to make the choice if she wants to continue with the pregnancy or she doesn't want to continue with the pregnancy because ultimately it is her life whatever society says whatever uh, is said in the names of you know equal parenting and aap bachcha kar lo hum sambhal lenge and this and that it is the woman's life which is the most affected so it is up to the woman and i think that is true empowerment if she gets the choice whether she wants to continue with the pregnancy whether she wants to have a child to get the medical test done to you know to clear her to have the child and if the test shows some kind of abnormality to either to have the freedom to decide not to have a child or to continue the pregnancy or not continue with the pregnancy i think for me that is true empowerment and from oh. being told what to wear what not to wear and from being told how to behave and how not to behave i think they should have all rights yes, yes. the the main thing is uh, about the being what to wear and what not to wear yeah. i seriously i want to focus on it start there yeah start from there so yeah. that's that's wonderful uh, like we heard we had a spectrum right from menstrual hygiene leading up to a woman making a choice about the fetus she is carrying and in fact uh, at fragilex society india this year our theme was women empowerment and women empowerment beyond corporate jobs and equal salaries we also wanted to talk about being aware there is a need for awareness on conditions like fragile x which can be detected at the fetus level and if not detected the woman the mother has to live with it throughout her life her life will change from then for the end of time and that's very beautifully covered so that brings me to my next point uh, what is your opinion about importance of awareness and acceptance yeah absolutely everybody uh, i mean like there are many people around who are not able to accept many things let's take uh, as i am telling about menstrual hygiene i hardly find people because i encourage people to wear menstrual cup use menstrual cup but uh, these day, they come to me and they say uh, i don't know i can't accept it mm -hmm. because uh, since childhood i've been using cloth and uh, the sanitary pads uh, and they feel unsafe to carry that uh, in the home and throw it in the dustbin because the uh, father in law the husband they are not uh, comfortable doing all this uh, even uh, people who are uh, in chums going to temples and all it can be a controversy but still i feel that they should accept things so they should have this awareness acceptance should always be there maybe uh, with the awareness like how you are creating right. and other things how you people are doing yeah. i think in future days future decades yeah. maybe things will change i yeah. want things to be changed absolutely yeah uh, i would think that uh, usually when when a person conceives they're very happy and they only get the basics tested uh, i mean like i have an 18 year old and i remember there were just basic things to be i think there was one usg test i don't know if uh, a lot of these tests cover these kind of things uh, these are things that may not cross people's minds that we need to take care whether we need to get tested is there a separate test so i i guess there should be this should be included as part of the mandatory tests that should be done before uh, you know when 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 this whole uh, gynec tests are happening probably the first trimester if we could maybe you i am sure you are already working with uh, hospitals and medical facilities where whether or not you like they should mm. in that case i would say don't empower them make it mandatory, mandatory that they should get tested and then we proceed i would say that is the kind of awareness and mandatory things that should happen okay so yeah so adding to what uh, 
Manju has uh, said, uh, I think testing is very, very important because it could be as simple as, not as simple, but as complicated as a woman go undergoing an infertility problems and Correct. a cause of that could be the fragile X yeah, uh, yeah. syndrome. Um, so getting those kind of tests in place, or as always, you know, there is there is always so much taboo around difficult conversations in our country, especially, you know, when it comes to infertility, when it comes to conceiving, mm. it's supposed to be a matter between a husband and a wife, and, you know, to be in, within the confines of the bedroom. But when it concerns the whole family, uh, why should people not talk about it? And um, if there are tests which can, uh, you know, potentially uh, help us understand how a fetus is going to be and how a child is going to develop, whether there are going to be any issues and eventually how you can deal with those issues, whether you want to deal with those issues or you don't want to deal with those issues. There are, if there are tests which can be done, I think those definitely, like you said, they should be made uh, mandatory. And I think this whole taboo really needs to, you know, uh, we need to get rid of it because... Yes. Um, it's not just within the husband and the wife anymore. I mean, when the child is brought into the world, yeah. A, the woman is the one who is the most affected, but she also needs the village around her to support her. And that support doesn't come if the child is neurodiverse. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the, yeah. a lot of women face a lot of issues in that uh, case. So I think if the awareness is raised amongst the community, first, uh, the mother is better equipped to, the woman is better equipped to understand if she wants to continue with the pregnancy or not or whether she wants to be pregnant or not in the first place, and then whether she wants to continue the pregnancy or not. Eventually, if she does decide to go ahead with the pregnancy, she should, she should be aware of, you know, the challenges that she's going to face, whether she's ready to take on those challenges. And the village around her, which is going to help her raise the child, because we can't do it alone. Yeah. We need people around us. They are also to be made aware of, you know, that there is a symptom, there is something like this which exists. And here's what you can do to make yeah. sort of life easier right. and whether it is, you know, uh, understanding what the child needs, whether it is understanding that the child can have an anxiety attack at any time or, you know, there are certain foods which can calm down the child or, you know, which can, um, you know, there are certain foods which can aggravate the child. It's simple things like this, but they really help to make a world of difference into making parenting easier yes. for the parents who are dealing yes. with a new low diverse child. So I think in that way, uh, raising awareness is very important. In fact, I must admit... Uh, to being very ignorant, I I I'm, I have an 18 year old daughter. I can't imagine what would have happened if things went wrong. I never heard of fragile X before that, and I can't imagine what how things would have been. So, I hope that more women. Uh, did any yes. of you uh, get through these tests when you were pregnant? I didn't no, know yeah. that. No, no, no. There, it does not. It is not mandatory. Yeah. But I think we should make it mandatory. Yeah, it's we not should. mandatory. I think. It's it's I mean, imagine my life would be so My our lives would be so different yeah. if we had a child with the fragile X syndrome yeah. condition. Right. Yeah. It would and be very really difficult. And nothing about this is easy. Yeah. Right. Like anything meant to happen is not meant to be easy. You're supposed to. You can face those challenges and what awareness does is it makes the path a little bit easier Correct. so that you can traverse it better knowing fully what you're getting into. So I think that's what that's why awareness is more important because you should be aware of the choices that you're making. I think uh, so the awareness to make the choice and then live with that choice. I think that's what is more important. And I think all mothers also should accept things like uh, they should put in more of inclusive schools yes. like maybe uh, not a separate or a special school maybe in an all Mm -hmm. inclusive schools yeah. because right from the path from the childhood we we let know uh, the kids that everything is normal this okay. i usually when uh, when my son rayan uh, is uh, i think 2 years nursery okay. when he is nursery i put him in a inclusive school okay uh, then he started asking me mom uh, what is it what ha why everybody is behaving weird is it normal mm -hmm. then i told him yes this is normal okay. you should accept things okay this is how we, everybody is normal. You you are not going to make him feel special, okay. or not you you are not going to make him feel low. Okay. You should accept things. Then he's like okay. Then he his best friend is someone with autism. Okay. He 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 is is like very happy with him. Okay. So I feel all the mothers and even it should teach the kids mm. that these are all normal and we should accept things yeah. normally. That's lovely. So I think um, it's very, very beautiful the way all of you have put it. And to sum it up, I could say that awareness is a huge step before acceptance. Yes. Whether it is for the parent and the family themselves or the community and children, 
because when you are aware you will have a better level of acceptance exactly. and be more helpful for the child and the family and you're not you know the child is not going to be stared at the child yeah. is not going to be excluded yeah. and it's a huge step towards acceptance and inclusion absolutely, absolutely. yeah right. I agree. so dr purva i would love to ask you this question um, can you tell us a little more about the different ways that the fragile x gene can manifest in people's lives whether as a pre mutation and a full mutation and what are the things we should be knowing about so as it? everybody know uh, fragile x uh, bell martin syndrome is a gene mutation okay so what exactly happens there is an fmr gene so it produces a protein which is used for brain development so in fragile x syndrome uh, there is the protein deficiency so the iq levels are little low so uh, can you please add on yeah absolutely so uh, yeah because of the mutation on the gene the fmr1 gene shuts down okay. and when it shuts down it doesn't do its job which is to produce the fmr protein that's essential for brain, brain development that, okay. that's how usually uh, okay. the syndrome they feel like uh, they are disabled okay. or they feel that the iq levels are yeah. low they and they yes, much later later. Than the yes yes, yes. Right. and they have uh, deformities like they are uh, not necessary a deformity they do have peculiar physical features okay, like, like a long, long face long ears yeah. flappy ears okay, okay. Yeah. and a prominent jawline right. broad forehead okay. and uh, in fact it's the only known single gene cause of autism okay. and now we have been spreading so much awareness about it and the importance of testing children who have autism mm -hmm. for fragile x syndrome Okay. okay because it's going to make a huge difference in the life of the child and the family if the diagnosis changes okay. and that is a very important component and uh, what, what does the test involve uh, it's a very simple blood test okay. oh so well, it, it, it tests the dna test called again Is so it's a fragile x test it's actually of course a dna test but the dna extraction is done in the lab okay. we don't need to bother okay. for us you just need to give 7 ml of your blood sample okay. Okay. and within 4 no, to 6 weeks no but that doesn't this get covered in the regular blood test no it's yeah, i not. really want to tell that okay. in hyderabad i don't see any diagnostic uh, i mean centers having this test no there is uh, uh, the ccmb I think only one, no. Only but one. but is it some place that would mothers would go for testing? No. I don't think so. I'm yes. not very so sure. So that's what I'm telling that we have to uh, tell everyone, yeah. all the diagnostic centers, so, uh -huh. so that they include this. So testing. CCMB is a government oh, right. organization, uh, yeah. like yeah. you know. Yeah. So I. I do. I didn't even know we could go there for this. No. So what I we have been know. doing for nearly fifteen years okay. is from throughout India. Okay. We uh, courier the blood samples to CCMB, okay. and you get the most authentic reports from there. Okay. So okay. it's one of the oldest centers doing fragile X tests. So you mean a mother uh, anywhere like in close by can walk into CCMB to get the test done? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Lovely. and you could even cut the blood even if oh, you are in hyderabad okay. you just gets a physician or right. a general practitioner to yeah. take a blood sample uh -huh. and you could you written and given your I details i think we should create an awareness I, about I this this is really yes. uh, yeah this is amazing today in yes. the morning i got to know that there oh, is a yes. place in hyderabad yes. where they do it so in fact from bombay we send the blood yeah. to hyderabad oh. i think there are two places in bangalore right yeah bangalore also now and now there are a lot of other organizations like uh, mnc is coming in with different kind of kits and tests but they're not very famous Precise. yet how many days does it test uh, take for us to understand around 3 to 4 weeks okay. so Which so what is a good time for a mother to get tested uh, well the if a woman who's pregnant yeah. needs to be tested it has to be at 12 weeks okay. that you take the cvs sample okay. that's when you can test the fetus mm -hmm. and you'll get the reports by 16 weeks okay. and then she can take a decision the first end of first trimester, trimester. maybe okay. we will be okay. able to uh, yeah like i mean so many insights yeah <laughs> i know i know it's very good information oh, and i think a lot of people need to be made aware yeah. about yeah. this you know because yeah. right sometimes just the word that you need to get a medical test done in by that kind of fear right. right but then when people understand that it's just like a simple blood test i think a lot of those right i, I wish uh, there there is there would be some pop culture references to fragile x because you know we 
regular people understood what dyslexia was mm. when we saw uh, what's that movie? Um, Tare 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 Tare. I mean, okay, we've all heard of this. Maybe right. as a passing mention right. in, in our biology textbooks. Right. But when a movie was made, right. it hit us so badly. Everybody was like, is my nephew dyslexic? Am I dyslexic? It created so much. So I don't know. I hope that... You know, that is a actually good platform to create an yeah, awareness. Yeah, so I yeah, hope we... someday there will be like a huge big Bollywood movie. Oh my will, god. <laughs> which will, you know, that is the kind of awareness that... I remember I today she was telling about a novel and yeah, uh, a series. We are talking doctor, about a yeah. book, uh, The Oak Leaves and okay. the author Maureen Nang. She okay. is a mother herself of okay. a child with fragile X okay. and... Um, she usually will mention Fragile X in her books yeah. and this peculiar book, uh, The Oak Leaves, mm-hmm. um, it's really beautiful because she, uh, you know, changes between two time zones okay. and uh, it's it's a beautiful book. I mean, okay. if you love reading, it's there on Kindle, you must read it. Yeah, of course. So, so it, in fact, like uh, while we are on this topic of women empowerment, awareness and the FMR1 gene, I'd also like to highlight that uh, women who are carriers of the FMR1 pre-mutation, around 20% of them have fertility problems. And very often, they go in for IVF without knowing about their status of being a carrier. And if they continue with the IVF and conceive a child, the child could be affected with fragile X. Okay. And a woman would never know about it. So ideally, we are trying to tell most of the doctors and women themselves, before you decide to go for IVF, mm-hmm. if you yeah, have okay. a high level of FSH and a low AMH, you ask for the blood test. Okay. You tell the doctor, I want to do this blood test. Because the the fact that you are a pre-mutation carrier is what is causing the infertility. Right. And then if she turns out to be a carrier, there are a lot of medical choices she can make. Mm-hmm. It's not the end of the world. So she can go the traditional way of getting pregnant and testing the fetus. Or there is pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, which is a step beyond the IVF, where they test the embryo. Okay. And in case she's not being able to have healthy eggs herself, they can take a donor egg. Yeah. The point is, uh, let that woman know that there is a condition called fragile X. Yeah. Would you like to get a blood test done? If she is positive, tell her the options she has. Yeah. yeah. And she has all rights to terminate also. Exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. This is what, yeah. yeah. Because and, uh, there is nothing like you are stopping her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's all rights to terminate. Yeah. And yeah. if the, they'll check the embryo, like okay. in case the embryo is not good, mm. maybe you can borrow. Okay. All you all can right. borrow and take, uh, take uh, go I, for an IVF. Right. I think it all boils down to, like you said, women empowerment and giving them the choice. Right. And helping them make an informed choice. It's Absolutely. not just, you know, oh no, I'm dictated by society, I have to do a child. No, right. it's right. not like that. You need to make an informed choice about what you're doing and how it's going to affect you. Um, you know, yeah. eventually how it's going to affect you. And I think from past uh, generation, I think now the changes have come with the children. Like maybe they had two kids. Now mm. we are having one kid. Yeah, right. She uh, has twins though. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, so, that's also the, one because they yeah. have in one go. And you know, yeah. talking about this, of late, I've come to know how it's not just parents, in-laws, husband, spouse. There is a new factor, uh, Shalini, called the astrologer. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to believe uh, that there are astrologers. Uh, like if, if somebody says, like, you know, I do, they, they're going to say, no, I can foresee that your child is going to be the oh, star of I India. Know, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. So he's, he's going, going to become a doctor when he's 16 years old. Yeah, old yeah, he's going to rule the world. He okay. has the jatakam of Jailalita. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of these things. So I hope that, uh, you know, women uh, like like Namrata just said, let science prevail. Yes, not so not, science not what somebody says because you pay them money. These are all because tomorrow he will not come and help you in case you... You know, yes. you are in a situation where you have to take care of a, a fragile ex, a child with the syndrome. I mean, that's a choice you make, not let anybody else dictate. That is also part of women empowerment. Yes. So true. Very and well of said. all the couple, I think couple, <coughs> I think mother will have the more. She, she should yeah. have the last yeah. say. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Her final say should be. Yeah. I think it's, it, she, in fact, when all, everybody should give inputs and the mother should be sent on a, on a vacation 
like a staycation <laughs> for two days with nobody else so that she can make a sound Probably decision and come back. Right. right. Yeah, I know. I mean, so that she uh, can make true, up. True. There are no external voices calling and they kuch nahi hota, beta. Mm. You know, go ahead. Right. Nothing. Give her the time and the space to think calmly and then go ahead. How do you I really guess. think it is going to work and maybe it will take time? <laughs> No. Yeah, I mean, I'm just uh, suggesting one of the practical <laughs> ways. Like, shut out everybody. I be know. in a calm environment. Make a choice and come back. And it is a scientific medical decision because today, um, 20 years of heading the organization and having seen over seven and a half thousand families and the number of women who went through IVF and then have a child with fragile X. Mm. Today, when you ask them uh, what they feel, they say, you know. I was not chasing motherhood at the rate of a special needs child. Yeah, right. Oh, right. They actually say that so blatantly and they, they wish they had known more. They wish they were better informed mm -hmm. to make a decision because mm -hmm. they actually chased motherhood and today they are in a situation where their life is completely ruled mm -hmm. by the child and yes. his needs. Yes. yes, because I think, you know... Um, as a mother, you do go through these phases in Correct. your life. You know, when your child is very little, very uh, small or very young, you know that, you know, this attachment is going to be there for two, three years. But then, like, after that, you sort of start getting your independence yeah. back. You sort of start getting your life back on track. You can think of restarting a career. And, yeah. you know, you can think of giving your work the priority it deserves if, you know, if you do decide to work outside of the house. Even if you don't work outside of the house, you really... You feel you have, you, you know, you can make time for friends, you can make time for your workouts, you can make time to indulge in passions, indulge in hobbies. I think that becomes very difficult when you have a special needs child. And who is paying the price of that? It is the, the mother, mother who is yeah, paying always, the price. Always. Nobody else is doing anything. It's only yeah. the mother who is has to give up. And like you said, Shalini, very rightly, that it is it is a permanent decision. Yeah. It is yeah. lifelong. So Even then, with new the why isn't the yeah. choice not given to mothers if they actually want to go through yeah, that or yeah. not right like you said it's the same yeah. with neurodiverse uh, children and neurotypical children yeah, right yeah. i think it's a woman who needs to be given yeah. the choice you know as there's so many times that when i'm helping my kids with their projects and when i'm helping the kids with my homework i keep telling my co-sister listen th there needs to be a manual <laughs> given to women before they decide to become mothers that you know yeah. homework will be a part of your life for 18 years <laughs> you know soaking almonds will be a part of your life for 18 years there you forget that the next day you know you're going to hear from it from your family i think these are very small basic right. problems that you know i'm saying that listen Maybe I would have reconsidered if I, have, you know, if I knew that something was going to happen. You're making us feel guilty. I've never done my child so much. Neither did I serve so college. You are like a model. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm saying is, you know, I mean, these are the challenges that like we face as kids, as parents to neurotypical children. Yeah. I'm sure these challenges multiply yeah. manifold when it comes to neurodiverse children. Yeah. Right. So let the woman decide if she wants to By deal with default, those challenges yeah. or no. By default right. the mother somehow like even yeah. now it happens with all of us. Yeah. Like if the child falls sick, a regular child falls yeah, sick. We don't it's somehow like everybody looks at you like do you have to go to office? Tell them you cannot come. Right. And nobody like very rarely does a man. He says no even if I take leave I think the child wants you. Somehow at the end of the day the whole owners yeah, yeah, falls like, the you know, it's And the I think life 50, which is going to change. Yeah. 50% right. of women have given up the career after yeah. kids. Yeah, yeah. Promotions. And just imagine uh, if it is a special child, then yeah. it would be very difficult yeah, for them. Too. Yeah. And that is a double whammy because also when you have a special needs child, the needs of the child are financially a lot more. Exactly. Yes. And if the mother has to quit her job, you have one less working person. Right. right. So you, the income is half. Yeah. and expenditure is Stop double yeah. and that is a lot to cope with and it does take a strain on the family dynamics within the couple and it does change a lot of things yeah. absolutely also i feel this you know there's other uh, thing that we really uh, need to work on as as you know women we need to be a little more accepting of you know generally women who have uh, neurodiverse kids you know like i see like i have a few friends who have neurodiverse kids and i you know, I see a lot of people coming up to them. Acha, you know, you have the strength to deal with it. That's why God has favored you with mm -hmm. this child. I feel, I feel that you can't say that because no mother would ever want their child to go through any kind of 
चैलेंजेस और प्रॉब्लम्स वॉट यू मीन बाई सींग दैट यू नो लाइक मेरे में ताकत है इसके लिए मुझे बच्चा ऐसा मिल गया लेकिन हाउ केन यू सेव समथिंग लाइक दैट सो आई रियली फील यू नो सोसाइटी इन जनरल एंड ऑल ऑफ आज इन जनरल वी नीड टू बी अ लिटल मोर नॉट सिंपथेटिक बट सेंसिटिव टू द वर्ड्स दैट वी यूज विद एनी पेरेंट एंड मोर सो विद पेरेंट्स ऑफ न्यूरो डाइवर्स किड्स लाइक यू नो I feel um, even with like parents of like neurotypical kids, they get to deal with like listen to sentences like oh, ये माँ का काम होता है and you know uh, for centuries we have been raising our children. तुम क्या खास कर रही हो तुम अपने बच्चे पैदा कर मतलब ऐसा लगता है कि तुम ही ने बच्चा पैदा किया. Listen, everybody's journey is different. Yeah. Every mother's journey is different. Who are you to generalize my parenting journey? And more so with the case of neurodiverse kids, I think nobody has a right to tell a mother that you know God gave you the strength. No, I don't want that strength. maybe i want it maybe i don't want it but again leave that choice to me please right. whether i want that strength or whether i don't and i think sensitivity is needed not sympathy because i think sympathy just ruins it all like right. if you get that bichari complex like you know right. bichari kya kar legi wo bichara bachcha hi kya karega i think that's the surest way yeah. to kill even whatever little self esteem that wow. you know the um, the moral of the parent it's and very the child it's very disempowering very emaciating thing yeah. to mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, you're not doing anything for yeah. them. Yeah. So, like, by you know, Doctor Purva said that you know we really need to be inclusive, and I think inclusiveness starts with sensitivity. I think yeah. we just need to be more sensitive to different kinds of people around us, Absolutely. and whether that's neurotypical or neurodiverse, I think more sensitivity is needed. That's Absolutely. very well said. Yes, yes. So, uh, would you like to start with your closing remarks for this evening? So before that, I wanted to ask you, like, how many people, like, you have been treating so many families, right, Shalini? so i wanted to know uh, how many people are coming with diagnosis and how many people are coming without diagnosis that's a lovely and interesting question so a lot of them do have a diagnosis in fact when a family receives a diagnosis that your child has fragile x syndrome and the doctor tells them okay you can contact the fragile x society some families can take up to 6 months to get in touch with us okay and some will get in touch the right next day and uh, we've experienced this and it still happens today because sometimes the family is still trying to process what has already come in and they are not ready for more they are not ready to take more information okay. to get more facts mm-hmm. and more of a reality check so you know at our organization we we pick them up from where they are Okay. if they are at point a we start from there if they are at point c we start from there okay. um we have in the last 3 years really worked towards 360 degree awareness and we are spreading awareness everywhere and a lot of you have contributed to many families receiving a diagnosis like today when someone watches this conversation and if they have a child with autism and haven't heard of fragile x they can go and ask the doctor about it if there is a woman trying to conceive she can go and ask the doctor about it mm-hmm. and we've had at least 300 families who have come to us with a self diagnosis right. and they'll say okay we heard about this on the radio we saw this on this one's blog or we saw this celebrity talk about it and that's how we got to know about it and they they have asked the doctor they have initiated it got the test done and they come to us with the diagnosis wonderful work that's wonderful yes. and i think that's that's really a uh, a big uh, you know big credit to the work that you have been doing with uh, fragile x and you know raising awareness and getting more people uh, because ultimately you're leading to happier families so absolutely think, uh, that's that's, yeah, that's that's the end goal yes. and i think you're working towards it beautifully and I'm so glad that you know we all could contribute yeah, in our yeah. own little ways using whatever we yeah. could. You know, for me in in my case, it's the power of social media. You know, getting yeah. the word out that you know there is something like this that exists. If you have the slightest doubt in your mind, here's whom you need to contact. And in whatever way, I think more people need to come out and show their support for uh, to raise awareness because uh, ultimately we all want to live in a happier world. Yeah, so absolutely. why not do whatever you can to make that happen? Yeah. Seriously, you are uh, doing a very good job. Yeah. Because Thank you. From my end, uh, my wrap up remarks would be like all that. All you are already doing, doing incredible work. Uh, but I was also thinking something like, where does pregnancy begin? What is the first step you do? Is that 
you go for a pregnancy kit the testing kit maybe we should start uh, you know creating awareness at that stage yes. you know next stage you're going to go for a blood test remember to add this and then have it in uh, i think these days a lot of expectant moms use a lot of technology apps hai na shayad that should can... be a way wherein uh, it will tell you ki you are in this trimester this is when you need to get the test Absolutely. and these days you can even time a reminder like yes. like you have a right a, a menstrual uh, apps yeah, right, right. Which will yeah. tell you yes. you haven't got your the periods test, are you yeah. okay something mm. so i think we should uh, there should be a lot of use of technology reminders send many awareness whatever it is i think that would actually add to the incredible work you're doing yeah, that's a brilliant idea that's a great idea mm. Mm. wonderful because yeah because so many women most women these days you know are on that yeah. so apps or on multiple apps yeah. or yeah. On at least the baby center app and you know trying to understand yeah. you know okay this week your baby is looking like a melon or this week your baby is looking like a lion <laughs> whatever but what you can do in that case i think that's a wonderful uh, it's way it's to get really a brilliant idea and we will Thank definitely you. work on it from our end yeah. and uh, probably get back to you with some resources for it happy to help And so. seriously, when I was in MBBS, uh, I read about this fragile X syndrome. Mm-hmm. And when I came to my MD, I I only read about fragile X. I didn't gone through <laughs> any cases. Oh. And then, in spite of doing my pediatric anesthesiology, I have not gone through any cases. Okay. Once after coming in touch with Shalini ji, okay. then I got many calls. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she is doing a really really yeah. great job because yes. in Hyderabad also. I don't see the awareness mm. because uh, hardly we get to know because rainbow you you get to know many patients many people from different uh, different different diagnoses different symptoms different yeah. diseases but still they were not able to diagnose things right. so maybe the awareness should be there yes yeah. and uh, even the I I want to focus on the inclusive schools yeah. also yeah. and uh, because I want all the kids to get from the child uh, yeah. when they are in, uh, their uh, childhood so that yeah we have a better society yeah. because you're ready to accept differences and you're more compassionate okay so thank you so much